Hello there. My name is Alberta Viala, and this is a video that I am talking about the man and the woman. I have done the bachelor husband, the angry husband. I have done a couple of them. Well, I can't name all of it. But this in particular is a very good one. I like this very one. When I was sitting down, everything just started crossing my mind and with my friends talking about their women and their, my friends talking about their men, I decided to do this. This is a video called The Player Husband or Wife. Like I say, I always ask a question. What type of a partner are you living with in your home? What type of a partner did you actually pray to God for? What type of a man were you looking for when you were young? When you were growing up, what type of a man did you go for? The cute looking ones, the dressy type, the nice perfumed ones, the cis pack stomach guys with nice packs, uh, how do they call it? Five five? A nice trimmed beard cut. Some men actually trim their eyebrows like women. Is that the type of husband you prayed for? The one that has the flashy car, owns his own house? <laughs> Why do you think he's not married? Because he's a player. Most men that are in the, their early 40s, without wives, without children, knows how to dress to perfection, dresses very well. You would watch him pass as he passed, just like you're watching a woman dress. His perfume alone can actually ring a bell over and over again when he's not even there. Those are player men, player husbands. Was that what you prayed for? Most girls would always say, what type of a man are you looking for? Well, somebody that is cute, nice looking, successful, owns a house, maybe a car, looks good, nice smell, nice perfume, good body, thick, tall, muscling. Oh, yes. God gave you that. Why are you complaining? There are a lot of humble men out there that don't, they dress, they don't just base their dressing on designer or designer perfume or expensive watch or shoes or men bags or stuff like that. And with good characters, perfect character for a husband material. Most ladies don't choose them. They will play such men and go in for the ones that look good, perfect, presentable men. Hmm. You got it. You got all you wanted. Why are you complaining now? You wanted a nice looking man. You didn't tell God, God, I want a man with a good character. When you find a man with a good character, the others is a plus. His money becomes a plus. His handsomeness becomes a plus. His house becomes a plus. Because you, the woman, you must always be hardworking. When a man is asking God for a wife, they always make a mistake and go like, God, I need a wife that is beautiful, nice shape, flat stomach, long, tall legs, beautiful hips, beautiful boots, pretty face, nice human hair, nice artificial designer wears to fit in a nice smelling designer perfumes to fit in. If you prayed for such a wife, if you went out there and among all the quiet, decent looking women, humble, down to earth women, you could not pick anybody but you picked the hoochie mama. Why are you complaining? Why are you calling her names? Whose fault is it? Who made that decision? Yourself. Don't ever make a, a decision and then start blaming others for the decision you make. When you go out and you look for the player husband, enjoy him. Because guess what? You picked that player husband. You picked that player wife. Instead of praying to God for a man with a good character, you started praying to God for a man that looks good and presentable to go show him off with your friends. You decided to pray for a woman that looks good, a woman you can show off among your friends. Oh, he's got the most beautiful wife. You, you didn't know the guy we were in school with. He's got the most pretty. You should see his wife. 
Well, you should go live with him and experience his wife for real. He's in hell. When you decide to pick a hoochie mama, a player girl, as your wife, when you decide to pick the don dada, a player husband, a player guy as your husband, don't go about complaining to people, and I've tried and tried and tried and he's not changing. Why would he change? That's how you picked him. That's how you got him. Why do you think at age 40 he's still there single, drives the pushy car that you sit in and enjoy? Smells so good. This guy is more concerned about his clothing than you, the woman he's dating. This lady is more concerned about her human hair than you, the man that she's dating. And most people like that don't care about what happened to you. When you're looking for a partner, look for a partner that in case you're blind, he or she would hold your hands and gently pat it and gently cross the gutters with you. When you're looking for a partner, look for a partner that when you're sick in bed, they will humbly and happily clean you in your shed and still smile and tell you, I love you. Such partners are very rare, but it takes God to find such partners. It doesn't take beauty. It doesn't take riches or handsomeness. It takes God. How many of you actually asked God for a good character wife? Honestly, none of us did, even me. I just said, God, give me a good, responsible man who's nice looking, who's presentable, somebody I can go out and feel comfortable with because of how I look and my status and my class in life and blah, blah, blah. That's how I also prayed. But if that was your prayers as well, you better start changing it if you're not married. If you're married to such a person, hey, it's too late. It's either mean or lose. You either stay there and pray to God for a change or you move on and start all over. But my point at the end of the day is, now who fought be that one? Now who go choose that woman? Now who push you? Who pursue you? Go choose that man. Now yourself, Sha. If you don't choose, make you no know they blame anybody. Say now my friend, don't push me. Say make I go choose that person. No now. Nobody push you. Now you carry your own yourself. Go there, choose that man or that woman. Don't blame anybody. Blame yourself. Guys, ask yourself a question. Ladies, ask yourself a question. How many of you saw the faces of your husbands when you were delivering? How many of your husbands were there in the delivery room with you, holding your hands, putting towel on your forehead, giving you water, patting you, giving you little scrubs on your feet when you were pregnant? How many of you have that type of a husband? Was that the type of man you prayed for? Guys, how many of you have the wives who not go to work and concentrate for once on you when you're sick? When you're not feeling well in the house, instead of they just leaving the food and everything, they would actually call in sick and take care of you like their own, like themselves. How many of you have those wives? When everybody goes out there to look for a wife, it is not to find a pretty thing. It is to find a woman of substance, a woman with character, a man of substance, a man with character. Someone that even on your sick bed, you would tell yourself, I can die this death and know that my husband will be good. How many of you have the player husbands or wives who pushed you there? Mostly we always start blaming the devil. It's not a devil. You made that choice. You, instead of praying for a character, prayed for money, prayed for handsomeness, prayed for prettiness, prayed for beauty. So when you are buying that human hair for 3,000 Ghana cities, for 50,000 Naira, for 100,000 Naira, keep quiet and buy it. 
$200, $500. Shut up and buy it because you made that choice. If your man doesn't even stay home for once to eat at the dining table with you and the children and you're blaming it on others, forget it because you made that choice entirely. When we are going out into marriage, we should always look for character. If you're already married and your husband or your wife is a player, don't pursue them away if you love them. Keep praying. Like I said, even the white man believes in prayers. When you keep praying and honestly believe, God would one day change this person for you and make them what you always desired. Most importantly, you always have to add God into your marriage. A marriage without God is like a ship on the road waiting for water to move it. It wouldn't move it. You may stand for a very long time. Instead of wasting your time and your years with the wrong person, pray to God to make that wrong person the right person. Ask God to touch your marriage. Ask God to touch your life. We all make mistakes. And when you do make a mistake, learn to say sorry. Because that is the only way you can always reach far and achieve your goals. When you're humble, you may get so many negatives turned into positive for you. Learn to be appreciative of what you have. Pray to God for a change if you're already married. I do not believe in divorce. But if you must divorce, make sure you wait. Pray before you take a next step. But if your partner is worth keeping, keep them and pray to God for a change. Because there's nothing impossible when it comes to God. Nothing is impossible when it comes to God. There are a lot of player husbands. There are a lot of player wives. They keep so many partners. Just keep praying. The mistake has already been done. The harm has already been done. There's no need for you to cry over spilt milk or sugar mixed with sand. But you can always pray that someone else will come in and change your situation and turn it around. And that somebody is God. No malam can do it. No Babalawi can do it. No charm in the world can change or save anybody's marriage but God. My name is Alberta Viela again. And this is the player, husband, or wife that we have in our homes. Like I said, there is no better way to dealing with a problem than giving that whole problem to God. If you've already picked it, Submit it to God now for a change. Have fun. Enjoy your marriage. But most importantly, if you are now deciding on what to choose for a wife, ask yourself, the girl I'm with, will she ever sacrifice her life for me when I'm in danger? When I'm sick, on the sick bed, can this girl be there for me? Do I have that assurity that this woman will stick with me through thick and thin? Do I have that assurance that this man will stick with me through thick and thin? That is the question you should ask yourself if you are about to get married. If you're already married, like I said, submit it all to God and he will do it. With your belief, your dedication of silence and prayers. Don't go screaming on them because you made that mistake yourself. So don't scream. Being a nagging wife or husband doesn't get you anywhere but it gets your partner to start cheating and to confide in other people rather meekness silence and prayers to god would always get them on the right track my name is alberta viola again i enjoy doing this i don't care about your negative comments but hey positive comments are always welcome because i take your advice as they come in you enjoy your marriage and stick to that partner because there is nobody like him and there is nobody like her. Have a good one.